D45 Tech Talk and the Smart Board Revolution Google Plus community presents a Smart Survival Guide. I'm your host, Matt Granger, and this episode is creating an answer sheet in Smart Response. So you can use Smart Response and create individual questions within a notebook file, but if you're using a paper test, you can also create an answer sheet very quickly. We're going to show you how to do this now. So if your students are taking a test, they have a paper test, you can create a notebook file and put all the answers in so they can work on the paper but also input the answers in a clicker. And when they're done, they have an instant grade. So you go up to the response menu and select create an answer sheet. Give it a title. Select the assessment type. And these are tied to the teacher tools. These really don't matter that much. The question types are multiple choice, true, false, yes, no, multiple answer, text, or a number, fraction, decimal. So you select the kind. So if it's a multiple choice, you have up to 10, which is good. You can also use that as a matching, up to 10. So you select the number of choices, how many points. If questions are worth a different number of points, you can put that in there. And you select the correct answer. Now we're on question number two. If it's another multiple choice, you just keep putting in the answers for all those multiple choice questions. Now maybe the next section is true, false. So you select the question type, and then you select the answers, however many true, false questions you have. For a number, fraction, or decimal type, notice that it has, this is an opinion question checked by default. You can, if there's an exact number, you can uncheck that, and then you put in the answer. So if I put in 2300 with a comma and try to add that, notice that I get this error. On the clickers, actual clickers, students don't have a comma button, so you can't do that. You have to put the number in without the comma. And notice here also it says that you can make a fraction by using a slash between the numerator and the denominator. And if you need a mixed number, you put the whole number, space, then the fraction. So I retype the 2300 without the comma and then click Add. So now I'm on number 18. I can uncheck to make it a pinion again, delete the previous text, and I'll make this one a mixed number. So I put the whole number, space, and then my fraction, and click Add. For multiple answer, again, by default, it says it's an opinion, so you would uncheck that if you had specific. Select your number of choices, and then you put a check by the correct answers. Click Add, check by the correct answers. Now, text questions are only an option if you are using the internet-connected devices, like an iPad or a Chromebook. If you leave it checked as an opinion question, notice that they can type up to 250 characters. That would be like a short answer. If you uncheck it, then the answers must be 20 characters or fewer. So, in this case, I'm going to leave it unchecked, and the answer is addition. And in the four boxes, I can type it up to four different ways because I know that some kids are going to misspell it. And if you only put it one way, it must be spelled correctly. So this could even be used for a spelling test in that way. And we've seen that each one does have an option to make it an opinion. The multiple choice, true, false, yes, no, it's all down here, a button underneath the multiple answer, we have the checkbox, the text, the numbers and fractions and decimals, the checkbox. So they can be an opinion. So making them opinion, it's good for a survey. If students have a paper copy of a survey or elections for student council or mock elections, you can collect the data, but there is no correct answer associated with the answers. When you've finished adding all the answers for the questions, you click Create. It's going to create a notebook file with however many pages. This one will have 
23 pages because it will have all 22 questions plus the title page. You can fill in or delete as much of this as you want or leave it as it is. Now you notice there's no question. There's really nothing on these pages. All that's important is that there's one for each question and that the answers are already connected to each question. Now you'd want to save this file as chapter two math test or whatever. And then when it's time to give the test, the students have the paper. You open this file on your computer, go to the page sorter tab and then go to the title page. Now it's important to do this in order. So once you're on the title page, go to the response tab, then click the properties tab, and down here allow all students to answer all questions at their own pace. The other option is the currently displayed page. But if they're using a paper copy, you want them to be able to answer at their own pace. And then a little further down, show results to all students. Now I usually select after all questions are answered. You also have these other options. I never do after each question because then you get a lot of yes. And that drives me crazy. Then you go up and click start this assessment now. You'll have to select a class. So I don't have a class set up here. I only have anonymous mode, but you would select say your math class where you've already imported your students. And there's a video for creating those in teacher tools. In the setup tool, which there's also a video for, set up to use the Smart Response VE, you'll see this. If you only have clickers, you won't see this. But this is the assessment ID. This is what students will enter at the website response.smarttech.com. You click OK. And notice also up here, you can get it again by clicking on it if a student needs to see it again. Now when the students are taking tests you can preview the results for each page. So on question number one, the results preview, you can see how many students have answered with each letter. You can also see who you're still waiting for. Now obviously you wouldn't have this up on the board. You'd be at the computer looking at this and you get the same information for each question. Now when all students are finished or at the end of a period you have to then stop the assessment. That's when all of the data is collected and sent to the teacher tools. You see there it's collecting the results and it will show up in the teacher tools with the name of the assessment that you gave it from the title page. So this would show up as chapter 2 math test. So that's how to create an answer sheet with Smart Response and run the assessment with the students in Notebook.